Yo. Yo. What's up, man? Out here in the rain. Out here in the rain. Hey, yo. This is part two to the karma video. This is karma. But this is part two. I'm going to put the link to part one underneath this video. I think I'm going to upload this video to my podcast with Soul Channel. Part one is on my other channel, Sean G. But I'm going to put that link underneath here. And uh, there's a whole series of videos on my other channel, the big channel, Sean G channel, about this whole situation. Um, for those of y'all that know, my mother died October 2020, about a year and a half ago. And she left a will for my son, for little Sean. Y'all know my son. She left a will for him. She told me she left a will for him. And she left everything to him. She didn't leave nothing to me. She didn't leave nothing to nobody else. She left everything to her grandson who had replaced me as her favorite person in the world and um, my mother told me the name of the lawyer that she left the will with before she passed a black girl my mother used the black attorney black girl attorney She left me, she told me the name of the girl. And said, Sean, if something happened to me, you call this lady. Her name was Miss Booker. My mother passed. I called this lawyer 17, 18 times, maybe more. Sent her 11, 12 text messages. Went to her office. Went to the courthouse, found her home address, went to her house, knocked on her door. Could not find this lady. She never returned at one of my phone calls. Come to find out, long story short, if you watch the other videos, you'll, you'll, uh, You'll see what happens. Come to find out. My mother's niece, Shannon Zellers in Lincolnton, Georgia, stole the will out of my mother's house. I couldn't get the will from the lawyer. I couldn't get the will from the lawyer. The lawyer wouldn't return none of my calls. She saw my New Jersey number. I live in Jersey. I live in North Jersey. I'm from up north. My mother lived down south in Georgia. Whenever she would see the Jersey number, she wouldn't pick up the phone. But I believe my mother left the will with her and had a will at the house. Shannon stole the will. My mother's niece, my first cousin. Black girl, nigga, like me. Black power, black lives matter. So when the will got missing, nothing went to little Sean as it was supposed to. And I had this split in the state of Georgia. You split 
the estate, if a, if a person dies in test state, means without a will, it goes to the next of kin. So my mother had two other sons with me. Actually, she had three other sons. It was four of us that she had. She had four boys. One of them was already dead. It was two left. And they was from Lincoln. They was from Georgia. They was from down south. I never was raised down south. So it was always static between me and them. And they hated my mother because she didn't raise them. She left them down south. I can understand that. I could dig that. I probably would have been pissed off too and maybe hated her too for doing that to me. So when she died, when they stole the will and ripped the will up, I had to split the estate 33% me, 33% the other dude, 33% the other dude. Right? I don't even want to say them niggas' names, man. I don't even want to say their names. So, when my mother died, all her nieces, y'all gotta watch the other videos. They all went in the house and stole all of her stuff. I was here in Jersey. When I got the call that my mother passed, I had to get myself together and go down there. Jump on a flight and fly to Georgia and go down and handle my mother's affairs. I grew up with my mother my whole life. Before I could get down there, all her nieces, all tiny babies' kids, all tats' kids, Except Godfrey. Godfrey did right by my mother. But the rest of them, they all went in her house, stole all her stuff, $10,000 diamond necklace, bracelet, David Yerman Pandora bracelets, Michael Kors bags, all kind of stuff. Who knows, whatever. By the time I got there, they had took everything. Titles to the cars, keys to the everything and I don't know this I don't know this because I'm really just getting down there trying to take care of my mother's stuff you understand and I'm trying to get in touch with this lawyer to get the will this bitch ain't calling me back so The lawyer ended up dying last year. The lawyer that my mother hired, that my mother paid her money to perform a service for her upon her death. I want you to do this. You're an attorney, attorney client privilege. Upon my death, give this will to my son and I want everything that I own to go to my grandson. She didn't do none of that. The lawyer wouldn't answer none of my calls. And then I finally got to her. I finally spoke to her on the phone. I spoke to her on the phone twice. But I finally got to her months after the fact. And I asked her, I said, yo, why did you, my mother paid you to do something for her. Why are you doing this? Why are you? not giving me the will why are you doing that lady she she sold me on the phone she said your mother is dead and hung up the phone on me but she did and uh so my mother's other two sons, the niggas I don't get along with, right? They was all in cahoots with the lawyer. 
to keep everything from going to little Sean, to my son and my mother's brother, James Gundy from Greenwood, South Carolina. Her half brother. Half, that nigga half. This is my real life, man. This story I'm telling you really happened to me, man. This shit really happened to me. He did all my mother's insurance. He sells insurance. And my mother, trusting her family, her brother she grew up with, she wrote all her insurance policies with him. Life insurance, all kind of stuff. Forge, after my mother died, he changed the name. Well, even before my mother died, he changed her beneficiary form. She signed the beneficiary form for her life insurance policy that upon her death, everything was to go to little Sean. He forged it and changed it. I got all the paperwork. I got all the paperwork. So that everything went to Shannon who stole my mother's will before I could get down there. This, this, these are the people I'm related to. Y'all call them family. I don't even like to use that word. I just like to say these people I'm biologically related to because family don't do this. Family don't do this. So he changed the beneficiary form. Now, the two other sons that my mother had Keith Gumby and Kent Gumby. They teamed up. After there was no will, it was 33% apiece. So them two teamed up together because they grew up together. So when they got together, they got 67%. I only got 33%. So they overruled everything in their favor to keep everything from going to Little Sean. I swear to God. I swear to God. And I remember when I first got down there, Keith was a piece of shit. He was a rat. He was a federal informant. He worked. He was a cooperating informant for the feds against me to help send me to prison. My mother's son, right? Yeah, this is true story. This is a true story. I swear to God, if I'm lying, may the sun, moon, and stars take the breath out of my body right now while I'm looking at you in this camera. He told me when I got down there, right, because I never, I left him alone. I left him alone. I never really, he, I never really, we always had beef, right? Because he was mad with my mother for what she did to him. And my mother didn't do me like that. So he would come at me talking about her. And I would tell him, nigga, I don't understand what you're saying. This is my mother. And you're not finna talk to me about her like that. So we was always at it, right? So he told me when I got down there, he hadn't seen me for a minute since I got out the joint. So now he's trying to be cool with me. But he already know the scheme that's going on with everybody as far as what's going on with my will, with little Sean's will. So he told me, he said, James told me and Kent yesterday, James Gumby told me and Kent yesterday that he told Georgia, which is my mother, and convinced her to change the beneficiary form from little Sean to Shannon. This is what Keith told me that James told him and Kent at the funeral home when they was picking out my mother's casket before I could even get there. And he forged the beneficiary form to keep everything from going to Little Sean, right? To go to Shannon. So, I'm still in the dark from the whole treachery plot that's going on, right? But when I start catching on, 
to what's going on and I'm the paperwork starting to come in and I'm seeing things ain't right. The lawyer ain't calling me back. Everything is going wrong. Now it come to me that, yo, this has been a whole plan. This has been a whole plan, right? To steal from my mother, my mother, my mother, man, who wanted to give something to her grandson. A 77 year old woman wanted to give something to a nine year old. An old woman wanted to give something to a nine year old to her grandson. That woman is my mother and that nine-year-old is my son. Check me out. Check me out. So when I get hit to what's going on, Oh, man, let me tell you. God knew what he was doing and the universe knew what it was doing. Because I've been out of prison now over six years. When this happened, I had been out of prison over five years. So, I've reacclimated into society. And I think a lot better than when I thought when I first got out of prison. If this would have happened, if all of this that I'm explaining you would have happened and I would have only been out of prison like five or six months or eight months, I wouldn't be making this video. I wouldn't be making this video. I would either be in prison or dead. So, I remember we was in my mother's house looking through her stuff, me and uh, Keith. This was right when I came down, right when my mother had died. And he trying to, he trying to be all right with me and be all right with them at the same time. He, he rock jumping. He jump on the rock on this side and get down with them. Then he jump back on the rock and get down with me. You understand? And I'm telling him this lawyer won't call me back. And even before that, him and Kent came to me and told me that they saw the will and they saw that everything went the little song. They both told me out their mouth, both of them. Swear to God, both my mother's son, which means they had already saw the will. So we was up there. I picked up the, I picked up his phone. I said, "Give me your phone, Keith." I said, "Give me your phone." We was in my mother's bedroom, and I called the lawyer from his phone. She answered. She wouldn't answer from my phone from the New Jersey number, but from the Georgia number, she picked up. And I said, yo, I've been calling you. Why you ain't calling me back? She said something. We hung up the phone. The case goes to probate. Being that there was no will, now it's got to go to probate court. They give me a date. They give me a date and a time to show up for probate court. The probate for my mother. I go, I fly back down to Georgia for the probate for my mother. It was like on, maybe like on a Tuesday at one o'clock. They found out I was in town and the judge changed the time from one o'clock to 11 o'clock. So when I got to the courtroom, his name is Lee Moss, Lincoln, Georgia. Lee Moss, you wrong. 
You know you wrong. And you got yours coming to you too. They changed the time from 1 o'clock to 11 o'clock. So when I got there at 1, they had already probated my mother's will without me. And all the decisions was made by them two, her two other sons. And the lawyer that Keith used to represent him in the probate was the lawyer my mother gave the will to to give the little Sean. Check that out. I swear to God, this is a true story. This is my real life. This really happened. This really happened to me, man. This is real. The lawyer that my mother hired to do her will to give to little Sean upon her death, who wouldn't give get in touch with me to give me the will, she started to represent him against me, saying that there was no will. Word is born. Yes, indeed. So they probated the will without me. Long story short, she died. The lawyer died a year later on the anniversary of my mother's death. My mother died October 22nd, 2020. That bitch died October 22nd, 2021. She died exactly a year later. And she was a young girl in her late 50s, maybe 60. She died a year later. This week on Monday, today is Thursday. This week on Monday, Keith died, my other brother, my mother's other son, who got down with the lawyer to keep everything coming from little Sean. He died in his late 50s heart attack massive both of them dead let me tell y'all something i told you before you don't play you don't jerk around old folks and little kids man you don't do that if you want problems with the sun moon and stars if you want problems with the universe and you want problems with god mess with old folks and kids both them niggas dead out of here out of here i say fuck them both fuck them they got what they deserved Karma is real, y'all. And y'all may be saying, like, Sean, why are you doing this video? Why are you... sharing your inner world, your inner... affairs, personal matters... on social media, on YouTube... And I really don't know, number one, because I'm confident enough to do it, right? Number two, I'm going to help somebody because this is going to happen to somebody else. This is going to happen to somebody else. Maybe not the exact scenario, but somebody going to cross you. Somebody going to violate you to the point to where you gonna wanna commit murder. Somebody is gonna do something to you to the point to where you're gonna want it to, you're gonna want to commit murder. And you may even plan to commit the murder. And as far as the sun, moon, and stars in the universe is concerned, you may be justified in committing that murder. But you got to look further and understand that they are man-made laws. 
that are not gonna look the other way, that are gonna say, nah, that wasn't justified. And they're gonna lock you away for the balance of your life. And you gotta play that tape all the way through. You gotta play that tape all the way through. And I'm sharing this story with you so you can see what happened to me and I understand how you feel. I understand what you wanna do. Trust me, I do. And one of the things I did was I talked to a lot of the niggas I was in, feds, in the feds with. I talked to a lot of dudes I was in the joint with and I told them what had happened. And they all said, Sean, man. They all told me to think about little Sean first before I do what I wanted to do. So think about little Sean, man. Who's gonna, who's gonna help him? Who's gonna be here for him? Who's gonna protect him if you ain't here? And that answer was nobody. But I felt, I felt, I felt, I felt weak. They made me feel weak. They made me feel like a chump. They made me feel like a punk. They made me feel like a sucker. Like they played me, man. They played my mother and they played my son. I felt I was disrespected. It wasn't that I felt disrespected. I was disrespected. And a part of me was saying, man, they can't, I can't let them get away with this. But then I kept hearing my mother tell me to look after her boy baby. She loved little Sean. She loved him. Loved him. And he loved her too. He used to go down there and stay the whole summer with her, the whole month of July, three weeks. Karma is real. And I don't know what you're going to do. But what you do come back to you. And Kent, you next. Mickey, you next. Shannon, there's going to be a part three. And now all of a sudden, everybody calling me, right? Let me tell you how corny. This is for everybody in Lincoln. Two called my father in South Carolina looking for my number. Like she couldn't find my number. And Shannon called an ex-girl of mine trying to get in touch with me about Keith dying. And then fake ass Howie, he called his frat brother from Chicago looking for my number. Well nigga, you know you got my number. Shannon, you know you got my number. Y'all calling me now to tell me this nigga dead, but Howie and Shannon, when y'all went to pick my mother up to take her to the hospital the night she got sick, you didn't call me that night when her will got missing. Why y'all didn't call me that night? Because how were you went with Shannon to take my mother to the hospital? Motherfucker, and I tell you to your face and you know I will. You know I will. You got it coming too. All of y'all, Gina, Susie, Hey, yo, Godfrey, man, Godfrey. Godfrey used to help my mother. He used to go cut her grass. 
I used to call my mother and she say, Yeah, God for that here, he out here cutting my grass. You know he got that ride lawnmower, and he out there cutting my grass. Godfrey used to go cut my mother's grass. And I never heard his name mixed up in this thing, not one time. He called me the other day too. I called him back. But the rest of Tiny Baby's kids are pieces of shit. Y'all got it coming. Y'all got it coming. Stay tuned for part three. Sean G. Peace.